I don't want you to give up. I want you to hold on. Amen. I want you to believe that God can do anything but fail. Yes. We're praying for you today, Sister Mary Ann Roberts, Naomi Smith, Sister Norma Jean Roberts, Minister Mosey Hill and family, Renee Tyler, Brother Gary and Brenda Altman, Fleeta Mae Bigsby, Sister Kelly Sue Collins, Kelton Waller, Harvey and Denise McGee Huskins in Chicago, Anne Lynn, Sharon, Ashley, Maurice and Rodney McGee and family, Mother Janetta, Reginald, Whitney and Micah Moore, the original Medea, Sister Johnny Kathy in Atlanta, Georgia, Church on the Rock is praying for you. Linda, Lanisha, and Lonnie Gilmore, Jerome Kathy, Mark Kathy, James and Deborah Gardner, and family. We're so happy to see Sister Paulette Little in the audience today. We are praying for you. Mary L. Rice in South Haven, Mississippi. Victoria, James, and Sherelle Baines and family in Las Vegas. Michael and Ebony Toomey and family. Sister Leola Nash and family. Ronald, Karen, and Santanese Jones in McDonough, Georgia. Oh, how we miss you today, Karen, and we are praying for you. Roy and Sandra Johnson, Marilyn Mariah Manuel, Sister Delma McGee Carver and family, Priscilla White, Angela Venable and family in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Sister Robin Calhoun, Charles Calhoun, Sister Brenda Hannah Vaughn in Tennessee, Nancy Searcy, we are praying for you. Jasmine Smith in Chicago, Marla Sterrett, Louise Lynette and Raquel Crawley, Helen Jones in Hayward, Hope Richard in East Palo Alto, Sandra McNeil, Stephanie Gaines in San Francisco, Diane Miles in New Orleans, Sister Brenda Ireland and family in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Thank you, Brenda for praying for us, and please know that we are praying for you. Ariel Crawford, Catrice Joseph in Warner Robins, Georgia, Jacqueline Thomas Dorsett in Los Banos, Rhonda Eller, Sister Jacqueline Marshall, Melody McDonald, Laquette Daphne, Joan McClanahan Walker in Houston, Texas, Jarrell Clardy, Carmen Carter, Daniel Martinez, hold on soldier, we are praying for you. Rebecca Jones, Sister Jean Phillips, Sister Catherine Smith, Dolores Harvey, Sister Donna Arnold and her entire family, Janice McGee and Danny Hargrove Jr. Prayer is the key to heaven, it is our faith that unlocks the door. And as we get ready to go to God in prayer, I want you to remember the words of that beautiful song. Yes, Jesus loves me. Oh, Yeah. 
church, God. Thank you, God, for the people that is under the sound of my voice, God. Thank you, God, for our pastor, God. Thank you, God, for the 34 years, God, that you have been by his side, God, every step of the way, God, impacting people's lives, God, through your word, God. Thank you, God, for our pastor, God, and just thank you, God, for just um, taking care of us every single day, God, wiping the tears from our eyes, God, blessing us in a special way, God, making ways when there was no way, God, staying faithful and loyal to us when we weren't so faithful and loyal unto you, God, just thank you, God, for all many blessings that you bestowed upon us, God, we have not lived up to the perfect example that you set for us in Jesus, God, and we sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, and we're sorry for our sins in that. We pray that you would just clean us up from the inside out, God, that you would just make us more like your son, God, so that we can set an example to those out there in the world, God, who yeah. need you, God. I pray for those that are sick and afflicted, God, those on our prayer list, God, those that just need to hear from you, God, yeah. once in their lives, God. I just pray that you would just come to their rescue, God. Yeah. Um, yeah. Heal them, God. Bless them in a special way, God. Make a way out of nowhere. Yeah. No way, God, because we're not leaning on people, God. We're leaning on you, God, the creator of us, God, the one that blesses us every single day, God, the one that created us, God. So I just pray that you would just bless us, God, and touch us, God, in a special way, God. I pray for the vision of this church, God, a hundred million dollars to first class ministry, God. Tears of land, passing those new souls, God, and musicians as well, God. You know the desires of our heart, God. You know that we want to bless you in a main special way, God. We want to win souls unto you, God. So I just pray that you would bless us with those things, God. And not only for that, God, but for the 10 things that we ask of you, God, that you will do for us in 2024, God, and the 10 things that we will do for you in 2024, God. I just pray that you would just help us to do our part as we know that you would do, our, do yours, God. I pray for this world, God. This world keeps on becoming worse and worse, God, but we know that you have the world in the palm of your hands, God. We know that you're all-powerful, you're almighty, God. There's nothing hard that you can't do, God. So I just pray that um, you would just help us to remain faithful and trustworthy unto you, God, knowing that your will will be done in due time, God. So I just pray that you would just help us to have, help us to just um, keep our heads held high, God, and to um, set example to those out there in the world, God, and those that are, don't believe in you, God, those that have um, led astray from you, God, touch them in a special way, God, soften their hearts, God, let them know that they need you, God, we all need you in this world, God. So I just pray that you would just bless us in a special way, God. Bless this ministry, God. Bless our guest pastor, God. Yes. Give us, let him give us a word, God, that we can carry on throughout this entire week, God. Yes. Um, all these things I ask in your son, Jesus' name, and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's put our hands together, everybody. Not, he's not the whole world in his hand. He's not the whole Watching 
church on the Rock Baptist Live uh, from San Jose, California. Like and share this page. Uh, let somebody know that we're on live uh, getting ready uh, to celebrate Jesus. Uh, amen. Uh, today we celebrate 34 years uh, of one pastor in one church. Uh, and we've put together a very brief program uh, just to encourage this preacher today. Uh, in just a moment, one of our young people is going to come and speak uh, on what Pastor Moore means to me. Uh, and then the music department will come and uh, share with us briefly a beautiful song of dedication to encourage the pastoral ministry. Amen? Amen. Hey, I can't hear nobody. Amen? Amen? Those people out there need to know that you're in here having some church. Uh, at this time, Sister Gabriella Harris is coming with What Pastor Moore Means to Me, followed by Sister Clara Jones-Smith in her own way. Let's say amen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, first, good night to God. Church congregation, I will be speaking on what Pastor Moore means to me. Speak in the microphone. All of the speeches usually start off by talking of a favorite memory of a special someone. I want to start out with one of my first memories I have of Pastor Moore. Mm -hmm. When I first, first, past, first met Pastor, I was about five or six years old. And when Pastor Moore used to do his sermons, I would always be on the floor playing with my toys. What nobody knew is that when Pastor would preach, I always pretend that my toys were given the exact same sermon. But the thing is that when everyone else thought I was interested, I was actually very intrigued. Something that I appreciate about, uh, about Pastor is that even though he has to play the strict serious teacher role, he can be quite funny at times. Mm -hmm. Like when during Bible study, when he calls people out for something they've done, or when he tells a story about a, something that happened in his past. Mm -hmm. That always finds a way to stay in my head for the rest of the week. <laughs> Being something that I respect about Pastor is that he doesn't care about what others think of him. Like when others judge him on what he does for a living, even though someone says something about him that's mean, he still sticks to his main calling for the Lord and is very passionate about it. All right. yeah. A way Pastor Moore has impacted on my life is that he's been very helpful in encouraging me and building a better relationship with the Lord. All right. Another thing he has influenced on me is that now that I'm older, I actually think about the sermons he gives and what they mean. Mm. So to bring it all together, Pastor Moore to me is someone that is there to talk to and someone that puts a good influence on me. Basically what I'm saying is that without Pastor Moore, I wouldn't be who I am today. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Just a little bit of the song, which is a testimony. I believe that it is the testimony of Pastor because I've been watching him do this for 20 years. Amen. I will sing hallelujah. I will sing, oh Lord. I will sing hallelujah, oh Lord. For you are the source of my supply. Lord, I lift your name on high. I will sing hallelujah, oh Lord. I will sing hallelujah. I will sing, oh Lord. I will sing hallelujah. Oh, Lord, for you are the source of my supply. Lord, I praise your name on high. I will sing hallelujah. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
church say amen. amen. Our preacher today needs no introduction. The older that I get, the more I realize that he is simply a man of God. Dr. Thomas Fisher is the 33 year pastor of Redwood City's Second Baptist Church, and he is our friend and brother. And so the next voice that you will hear after we have stood and sung our congregational uh, selection, our shamanic selection found on the last page of your bulletin, let's all stand together as we get ready for the word of God. We sing it a cappella because we want God to hear our voices. So you sing with the voice that God has given you. Amen? Amen. Oh, bye. years, amen, 34 years, and um, I feel 
I like praising, praising him. Amen. I mean, I feel like praising him. Amen. And Pastor Moore has fought the good fight of faith. He's exemplified uh, 1 Corinthians 15 and 58, where it talks about being steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. And it reminds me, it reminds me of my San Jose family. If I knew I'd be on Camp Comcast today, I would have went and got a haircut. Amen? Amen. But my San Jose family, I'm born and raised in San Jose and grew up in San Jose High School, college in San Jose. And so I'm excited to be greeting uh, my San Jose family. Amen? Amen. But if I'd known Pastor Moore, if I'd known Pastor Moore, amen. How ministry and ministry, amen, you may not get paid what you deserve, amen, amen. but the retirement benefits are out of this world, amen. 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 amen, and so we look forward to our knowing that our labor is not in vain in the Lord, right. no church on the rock, I'm excited, All right. matter of fact, I'm so excited, I'm, I'm trying to contain myself. But every now and again, if my excitement usurps my pulpit etiquette, yeah, yeah. I already made the announcement, I'm glad to be here, amen? <laughs> matter of fact, matter of fact, I'm, I'm learning to be a little more careful, you know, on the microphone now that it's going out on Facebook Live and YouTube and, you know, throughout the community, I'm learning to be a little more careful my comments or my commentary, amen, but I'm so full right now of emotion and excitement, you know, even with the fear of going viral for the wrong reason, and I don't want to go viral for the wrong reason, I want to go viral for preaching the gospel of Jesus, and one of my greatest fears is that I might go viral for the wrong reason. But with that as a possibility today, I still want to say what I just have to say. I'm so excited that I feel like a Christian, a Christian terrorist. I'm about to blow up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel like a Christian terrorist. I'm about to explode. Somebody ought to hear what I'm trying to say. Amen. Amen. So thank you again, Pastor Moore, being able to join you and celebrate with you. Amen. Uh, another year. Amen. Amen. Uh, this joy that I had, the world didn't give it to me. Amen. The world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. Amen. Amen. Every time, you know, and I'm about to get in the message, I know that's why I'm here today. But after 34 years, you can't help but say, you have a phenomenal pastor preacher. Amen. amen. This pastor preacher, not only can he rightly divide the word of truth, amen, not only does he give wise, amen, wise counsel, amen, I mean, just gifted, singer, talented person, amen, and just all that you would need, compassionate and, um, and merciful, yet Firm, amen. Come on, somebody know what I'm trying to say. And we can't help but just congratulate him on another year. Come on, let's give God some praise. <laughs> Pastor R.G. Moore III. Amen. In the era where the, the lie is rather to believe than the truth. Yeah, yeah. In the era where, amen, folks no longer trust in the authenticity of the scriptures, yeah. amen, or in the uh, divinity of Jesus, you need someone yeah. who'll stand, amen, yeah. who'll stand on the rock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Pastor R.G. Moore III stands yeah. on the rock. Yeah. Have I got a witness? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So we congratulate you, R.G. Now, what I would like to do today is preach a message entitled, uh, A Right Relationship with God. All right. Now, I originally was going to entitle it, um, Fake It Until You Make It. 
a right relationship with God. Amen? Amen. And then as I thought about it, I said, no, we don't need to be faking it until right. we make it today. But as a subtext, fake it till you make it. All right. All right. A right relationship with God. And we'll find that in Psalm 34. If you'll turn with me to Psalm 34. And we'll pick up reading there. All right, Psalm 34. And you'll see it says in what is called the title or the superscription. It's a title or superscription in Psalm 34. And in that title or superscription, it says a Psalm of David when he pretended madness. Some translations say when he changed his behavior. Mm -hmm. And that word uh, in the Hebrew, Shana, he altered, he changed, he pretended, he faked. That's where I got the idea of faking to you, man. All right. And those who have heard me preach before, you know I'm always trying to make sure I'm biblical. So a Psalm of David when he pretended madness before Abimelech. And we know that's a title. This is the title of this psalm. But Abimelech, not a name, it's a title. Like, like for instance, uh, our MAGA friends, our MAGA friends, they still say President Trump. Mm. You know, President is not his name. It's right. a title. Right. Abimelech, we know that's Akish. Right. Akish was the actual king. But Abimelech was a title. Right. So he pretended madness before Abimelech Akish, who drove him away and he departed. So that's the superscription. That's the superscription, the title that leads to this song. And we know that it's rooted in um, 1 Samuel chapter 21, picking up at verse 10, where, where this history comes out of. And it's when, of course, David was in the area of the Philistines. All right. And you remember David had defeated the Philistine giant Goliath, and he had went out on many excursions to fight against the Philistines. And now he come right back to the Philistines while he's running away from King Saul. All right. And he'd run away from King Saul because King Saul was jealous of him. Because when he defeated the giant Goliath, and then they had a few other victories, and then when they came back, and they were coming back into the city, and the women were coming out with tambourines and pom-poms, amen, and they lined up the streets in order to celebrate King Saul. And they said, Saul has slain his thousands. But then they saw David that great warrior who defeated Goliath and said, David has slain his 10,000s. Mm -hmm. And it says that Saul was angry with David and from that point on sought to kill him. All right. And so David is running now. He's running from Saul. He's running from Saul and he finds himself, watch this, as we read it, we're still reading Psalm 34. We just in the superscription, amen? And so he's running from Saul, finds himself with the Philistine. And there with the Philistines, he said, wait a minute, I've been killing Philistines all my career. Hmm. And now here I am with the Philistines. And he found out he was in trouble. And so he said, I need to fake it till I make it. Right. Now let's pick up there. That's the history, the context, right? And so watch this, the right relationship with God. And so and so he pretended madness before Abimelech, who drove him away, and he departed. Now, and then it says, it comes out of the superscription and out of the title of the song. And now we read the actual song. It says, I will bless the Lord at all times. Yes. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Mm -hmm. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Mm -hmm. Let's stop there. Amen. Mm -hmm. And we'll preach out of this song. Amen. 
Amen. Fake it till you make it. All right. A right relationship with God. Amen. Amen. Did you get that? Yes, sir. And so, and so I know that you have heard me say this before. Amen. I know Pastor Moore is very familiar with it. That, amen, the largest room in the world is right here in Evergreen. Amen. The largest room in the world is right here in Evergreen. Okay. And it is the room for improvement. Mm -hmm. Have I got a witness here? Uh -huh. If you are where you are going, amen, you're going nowhere. Mm -hmm. If you are, if you have arrived at what you are headed to, mm -hmm. amen, amen, you are traveling nowhere. All right, all uh -huh. right. And this statement that so many of us make who have been around now at Church on the Rock, 20 and 30 years, these statements we make where, you know, I've made it or, or I'm finished or I'm through or I've done it all, amen, those kind of statements or I'm retired, I'm not going to work anymore, you know, all those kind of statements, amen, I've done all that I can do or I cannot do anymore, amen, those are not statements of accomplishment, those are statements of abandonment. All right, all and right. I got a witness here. Yes, sir. And so all I'm trying to say is that we always ought to be looking for what's next. All right. We always ought to be aspiring toward what is next, huh? And yes, there will be times when it seems, Pastor Moore, there will be times when it seems as if life has no meaning. Mm -hmm. And there will be times when it seems as if God is not present or God is not interested. Yeah, or yeah. even available in all that you're trying to do in the name of the Lord. It will seem as if God does not care, mm. right? Because life is so many and life is so varied, amen, that we go through so much and we have to deal with so much that our emotions and our thoughts, amen, are all over the place, amen. And oftentimes we can have heavy evaluations and our emotions and our thoughts will be so many and so varied that we'll find ourselves, amen, being optimistic and pessimistic at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Got a witness here. We'll be positive and negative at the same time. And so we'll say, I always mess up. Amen. And then that, that's the negative. And then we'll throw a positive on it. Amen. But the Lord knows my heart. Somebody ought to hear what I'm trying to say. Come on, Reverend. Amen. And so having a right relationship with God is so important. Amen. And so this idea, this idea, amen, of success has deceived so many. Amen. And so it seems as if now we're in this fantasy world because a success has been so deceptive. Mm. And so now in order to be successful, watch this. Here's how deceptive it is. Amen. You have to have notoriety and wealth. All right. Or in order to be successful, amen, you have to have fame and fortune. Mm. And if fame and fortune is your reward or notoriety, watch this, and wealth are your reward, amen, then you are successful. Mm. Or, 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 amen, current language is if you have, if you're a celebrity or an influencer, then you have success. Yeah, yeah. Because that means you have subscribers. Amen. And I understand you're on YouTube, so like and subscribe. Church on the Rock. Somebody over here. Amen. 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 And so, and so in order to be a celebrity, you have to be a celebrity and an influencer where you have subscribers and followers. Amen. And likes. Amen. And that's what it means to be a success. Yeah. But I'm here at Church on the Rock, amen, this day in February in 2024 to remind you, Pastor R.G. Moore, that except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not about, amen, how many subscribers, it's not about how many hits, it's not about how many views, amen, except the Lord built the house. Yeah, yeah. They labor in vain that build it. Yeah. 
Amen. Right there, I feel like I need to put a shout out. Amen. Right, Shannon right. Sharp. Amen. And Shay Shay. Somebody ought to hear what I'm trying to say. Except the Lord build the house. Yeah. They labor in vain and build it out. A shout out to Cat Williams and Monique. Yeah. Amen. A shout out to Oprah and Tyler Perry. A shout out. Amen. A shout out to Ricky Smiley and Pete Diddy. Except the Lord build the house. Yeah. They labor in vain that build it. Amen. Yeah, yeah. A shout out to Mike Epps. Amen. And uh, Usher. A shout out to Amen. Kevin Hart. Amen. Except the Lord build the house. Yeah. They lay. Amen. A shout out. Amen. To uh, Steve Harvey. Except the Lord build the house. Is that, is that enough black history yeah, for this yeah, month? Yeah. Except the Lord build the house. Yeah. They labor in vain that build it. Amen. Uh -huh. And like the future becomes the past, only what you do for Christ will last. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Amen. You may build. Yeah. Huh? Great cathedrals, large or small. Yeah. Huh? And you may build skyscrapers grand and tall. Yeah. Amen. And you may conquer all the failures of your past. Yeah. But, amen. And see. See, if I was at home in Redwood City right there, I would say, but but when I get to a but, that conjunction, I say, God has a big old but. Somebody ought to hear what I'm trying to say. Only what you do for Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so that brings us to Psalm 34, where the psalmist is trying to let us understand. You can fake it till you make it. But be in a right relationship with God. And the right relationship with God, watch this, watch this, is that there's never a time to leave God out. All right, all right. And so the psalmist says in Psalms 34, there's never a time to leave God out. He says, I will bless the Lord at all times. Yes, yes. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Uh -huh. So there's never a time to leave God out. Amen. Amen. And he makes it personal. He makes it personal. And, and he says it's personal as well as continual. It's a personal and a continual commitment. It's never a time to leave God out. I will bless the Lord no matter what happens in my life. No matter what's going on in my life. No matter what's happening all around me. I'm going to kneel before God. I'm going to bless God. I'm going to submit and I'm going to surrender myself to God. And it's personal and continual because there's never a time to leave God out. And what's interesting about this is that God desires our, our, our praise, amen, our, our blessing. God desires and delights in our praise and our blessing. And so the psalmist says, it, it, since that's the language, the love language of God, is our blessing God and praising God to be in right relationship with God, I'm going to always bless God, no yeah, matter yeah. what's happening in my life, no matter what's going on with the economy, no matter what's going on in my household, I'm going to have a personal and continual commitment, amen, to including God in my life. Yeah, yeah. And so God's praise will always be in my mouth. Huh? Have I got a witness here? And so he said, there's never a time where I'm going to doubt God. There's never a time where I'm going to limit what God can do. And so his praise will continually be in my mouth. And so I might be up one day and then down another day. But guess what? That's not going to restrict, amen, including God or excluding God. I'm still going to include God whether I'm up or down. Or part of the in crowd today and then I, I might get canceled or 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 because of my post, amen, and because of my opinion, amen, I'm getting all of this negative feedback. And so I might be in or I might be out, but I'm not going to leave God out. There's never a time to leave God out. I'm going to bless him and give him the praise from my mouth. Huh? I, I might be dark skinned, or you might be light skinned. Amen. I might have my ancestry from Africa. Your ancestry might be from the Middle East. But wherever you're from, whoever you are, whatever your backdrop 
or background. Amen. Uh, amen. Yo, amen. Yo, a spit test. Amen. That brought back your ancestry. 23. There's never a time to leave God out. Yeah. Uh, I got yeah. yeah. it. lack. Be in lack or abundance. Uh -huh. And it's amazing to me how there have been times I've been here, amen, and folk were in lack. Yeah, amen. Yeah, now yeah. I'm looking around the sanctuary and everybody, you either faking it until you're making it, but everybody looking like they're in abundance. But whatever the case may be, there's never a time to leave God out. Yeah, yeah. Rich or poor, sick or healthy. Yeah. Amen. Don't leave God out. There's never a time to leave God out. Have I got to be? Yes, sir. So when we look at this today, what the psalmist is saying, my right relationship is I'm a praise God. Mm -hmm. And one of the celebration or praise writers wrote a song about it. Mm. Want to hear it? All right. Here's how it goes. Praise him. Uh-huh. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Yeah. Praise him. Mm -hmm. Jesus, bless his Savior. Yeah. He's worthy to be praised. Right. From the rising of the sun uh -huh. until the going down of the same. He's worthy. Yeah. Jesus is worthy. Yeah. He's worthy to be praised. Huh? Glory. Uh -huh. Glory. Glory. In all things, yeah. give him glory. Uh -huh. Jesus. Bless him. Bless his Savior. Yeah. He's yeah. worthy to be praised. Yeah. God yeah. is our rock. Yeah. Huh? Hope of salvation. Uh -huh. Strong deliverer. In him I will always trust. Praise him. Praise Amen. I feel my help coming right here. Praise him. Uh -huh. Praise him. Praise Jesus. Uh -huh. Bless his Savior. Yeah. He's yeah. worthy. There's never a time, there's never a time, there's never a time to leave God out. Yeah. Watch this second for those that are keeping notes. This psalm says to us, watch this, he says, what happens to you ought not to affect a man what happens in you. Yeah. All right, all right. Somebody ought to hear what I'm trying to say. The song says, watch this. What happens to you yeah. ought not to affect what happens in you. Mm -hmm. Or another way to say it is that the song is, is saying to us is that what happens to you ought to elevate your theological view. Okay. And so he says, watch this, watch this. My soul mm. shall make its boast in the Lord. And so what the psalmist is saying is when you're in a right relationship with God, amen, my soul will make its boast in the Lord. Yeah. And so what happens to you doesn't have an effect of what's happening in you or what happens to you ought to elevate your theological view. Right. And so my soul, and understand that in Hebraic thought, amen, the soul, amen, was the complete person. The soul was the whole person. The soul was the all of you. The soul is the you that talks to you, amen. The soul, amen. And one of the things that, amen, our psychiatrists tell us, amen, that the person that talks to you the most is you. And so you ought to be saying some positive things to yourself. And so the psalmist says, my soul, amen, me, that is me, the all of me. And then when we get to, to Roman and Greek culture, they begin to divide up the person. They begin to segment. And so we understand the soul then is the thinking part of the person and it's the emotional feeling part of the person and it's the doing or volitional part of the person. And so the soul has to do with your thinker, your feeler, and your doer. And so, and so the song is the saying right here, no matter what happens to me, amen, it's not going to have an effect on how I think, how I feel, and what I do. No matter what happens to me, it's going to elevate what I think about God, how I feel about God, and what I do for God. And so, and so whatever happens to me, it doesn't affect 
was going on in me. My soul is going to boast in the Lord. Yeah. Whatever happens to me, yeah. watch this, it's going to elevate my theological view. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. In, the Lord. Yeah. in other words, the psalmist is saying, my life, when you're in right relationship with God, my life makes God look good. Yeah. Somebody ought to hear what I'm trying to say. And in that what Pastor Moore been doing for over 30 years, yeah. amen, making sure that his life makes God look good, amen. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Have I got a witness here? Yeah. And the point that the psalmist is making here is that I'm going to give God the credit all right, all right. for all that's happening in my life. My, my life is going to make God look good. I'm going to give God all the honor for all that goes on in my life. Yeah. And isn't that what Job did? Yes, sir. Amen. Job who had a booming business. Mm. He had a booming business. And all of the animals that are listed that Job had were productive animals. Camels and oxen and sheep and go, they, they would produce something. Yes, and that's yes. why Job had a booming business and he had 10 children. Come on now. That's right. Amen. You struggling with the two and three baby kids. You had, he had 10. He had a productive life. Yeah, yeah. And with all of that production, God, God allowed the enemy to take it all away. Uh -huh. And still Job said, my life is going to make God look good. Amen. And so he said, the Lord gives yeah. and the Lord takes away. Yeah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Yeah. And, so, and so no matter what happens in your life, the psalmist said, right relationship with God. I'm going to give God the credit. I'm going to give God the honor. I'm going to brag and boast. I'm going to brag and boast about God. I'm, I'm going to brag and boast about God. And some of you, amen, I understand you just closed out of escrow and you give your broker and your realtor, amen, some honor and glory. The psalmist said, no, I'm going to give God the praise. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Some of you sitting up right here now, amen, watching TV, amen, with bad credit, amen, still got to prove for your car loan. I'm not, he said, I'm going to give God the glory. Yeah. Because God is ever present. God is always aware. God is always attuned. Amen. God is always aware of the activity of his creation. And so he says, since God is always aware, I'm going to make sure my life makes God look good. God, because God is always working in my life. Yes, yes. And since God is always working in my life, I'm going to make sure I'm working to make God look good in my life. Yes, Have yes, I got it with me? Yes. And that's where we see, let me slow down, amen. I had that on the 45 RPM. Oh, okay. <laughs> let me put it on the 33 and the third. Somebody okay. with a turntable know what I'm talking about. He said, my life will make God look good. Mm. And when we look at Psalm 34, come on, look at it with me. Pull it up again. He says in verse 4, he delivers me from all my fears. Yeah. Huh? That's my life making God look good. All right, all right. He says in verse 6, he hears my cries mm -hmm. and he saves me from trouble. That's him saying, my life is going to make God look good, huh? Mm -hmm. In verse 7, watch this. And I love verse 7. It says, he surrounds me or he protects me with angels. That's right. Angels are surrounding all around me. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I was a youngster coming up in church, we would sing, amen, in our little children choir. Mm -hmm. All night all day. and all day. Yeah. Angels keep watching over me. Mm -hmm. All night. Yeah. And all day, Hallelujah. angels keep watching over me. Huh? Uh -huh. And that's what he's saying. He said, my life is going to make God look good. Yeah. And then in verse 10, he said, he meets my needs. Mm -hmm. Somebody ought to hear what I'm trying to say. In verse 15, he says, he sees me, but not only does he see me, he hears me because his eyes are 
are on me and his ears are open to me. Yeah, and so yeah. God is always looking out for me and listening to me. And so my life is going to make God look good. Yeah, yeah. And then I like verse 17. He says, in verse 17, he says, he delivers me out of all my troubles. All right, all right. Uh, and so somebody been wondering why it seemed like you just go from trouble to trouble. Uh -huh. It's because God is going to keep delivering you. <laughs> so your life make God look good. Yeah, I got a yeah. witness here. And then that's verse 17. Then verse 19, which, which that one caused me to pause for a few minutes. All right. Because it said, many are the afflictions of the righteous. That's right. So I had to pause right there. Because, because I would better understand that it said, many are the afflictions of the wicked. Many are the afflictions of the no good. That's right. Many are the afflictions of the scandalous. Come on, brother. Many are the afflictions, amen, of the unusual, uh, what they call them, ditty parties. Amen. Right. And they said, many are the afflictions, amen, of the ungodly. Come on, brother. Many are the afflictions of the unholy. Yeah. But it said, many are the afflictions of the righteous. Preacher, preacher. Oh, Lord. But don't stop right there. But <laughs> God has what? <laughs> amen. Some of y'all, amen. You've been watching Spike Lee. Amen. Amen. Ricky, uh, uh, Sinequa, somebody got a big old. But God got it. I wish I had time. Preacher. But many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers you out of them all. Yeah, yeah. My life uh -huh. making God look good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. And then he said, God is near to me. Mm. But watch, watch. And this is in verse, what is that? That's verse 18. I skipped the 19 after 17. But verse 18, he's near to me. Uh -huh. Those that have a heart that's broken. Those that have a spirit that's crushed. Mm. God is near. Yeah. Yeah. And all he's saying is my soul is boasting in the Lord. And then he concludes it in verse 22 when he says the Lord redeems me. Somebody ought to hear what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And so when everybody has emptied you out. Mm. Amen. Set you on the corner. Amen. Yeah. Put you in a plastic bag. Amen. And then throw you out in the trash or the recycle bin. Amen. God, God redeems you because you have redemption value. Yeah. And so God will take you to the recycle, recycling place. So you can be reused and repurposed yeah. for him. Yeah. God is always with us. Uh. And so the song that says, my life makes God look good. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord. But I'm almost through. I'm almost preacher, through. I'm preacher. almost through. There's never a time to leave God out. Mm. Amen. Your life ought to make God look good. Yeah. Huh? Yes, sir. That's being in right relationship with God. Yes. And yes. you can fake it till you make it. All right. Huh? You can fake it till you make it. Be in right relationship with God. Always giving God the praise. Amen. When you don't feel like it. Always blessing God when it hurts you. Always. Amen. Boasting about God when it seems as if there's nothing to brag or boast about. Fake it till you make it. Yeah, yeah. And then my final point today mm. out of Psalm 34 mm. is this idea is, amen, it's never a time to be quiet. <laughs> now, my Pastor Moore, you know, I moved you know, I started off the sermon talking about if you are where you're headed to, mm -hmm. you're going nowhere. So I'm always, every year, amen, every season, amen, I'm looking for what's next. All right, all right. And so the thing that I'm attempting to do now, what I'm attempting to do now, is, is not try to be a great pastor. Mm -hmm. Amen, because, because pastoring is going to end. I'm not trying to be a great preacher. All right, all right. Amen. Because preaching and prophecy is going to end. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. But what I'm trying to do now is be a great praiser. Mm. Amen. Because, because that's one thing that never ends. Huh? All right, all right. In heaven, they're not preaching. No, no. no Amen. No. In heaven, they're not pastoring. That's right. But in heaven, 
They're praising God's name. And so what I'm working on now is being a great praiser. I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. And so there's never a time to be quiet. And so there's never a time to stop singing. There's never a time to quit rejoicing. There's never a time to cease from thanking God. There's never a time, amen, to give up on giving God the glory. Huh? The glory that's due his name. All glory belongs to God. And so there's never a time to be quiet. And that's why this song says, magnify, magnify the Lord with me. Uh-huh. Oh, I like that transition there. He went from a personal, continual commitment to blessing God to a communal, amen, to a communal call, uh-huh. amen, to magnify the Lord with me. Yeah. Now, you understand, watch this, watch this, watch this. You understand that, that that magnification has to do with making large. Okay. Right? Yes, sir. And so, and so whatever you focus on, whatever you focus on becomes bigger. Yeah. <laughs> Have I got a witness here? Yeah. Yeah. And so and so some of you you need you know you need trifocus. Mm. I remember in my day it was bifocal, now it's trifocus. All right, all right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. If they say amen, say that's me. <laughs> because whatever you focus on becomes larger. All right. All right. Huh? All right. And I know we got young people here still in high school and college. And, you, you know, they have you looking in microscopes now. And these microscopes are looking at subatomic matter. Mm-hmm. And they're getting smaller and smaller and smaller particles. Right? Smaller yes. and smaller to the point where they're beginning to see nothing. Watch this. And then, amen, you're looking at these telescopes. Amen. All these telescopes and they're looking light years. Amen. Radioactive and looking light years into space. And they're looking further and further and further into space where they're now beginning to see nothing. Yeah, yeah. Because that's what God did. He created everything out of nothing. Somebody ought to hear what I'm trying to say. Yes, sir. We call that creation ex nihilo. God said, let there be, and there was. Yeah, and out yeah. of nothingness became something. Yeah. And so all you discovering in your subatomic is the nothing. And amen. And your atmospheric and astronomic, the nothing. Yeah, because yeah. God created everything out of nothing. Yeah, yeah. And whatever you focus on uh-huh. becomes larger. Yeah. And so God, the song that says, Amen. Since whatever you focus on becomes larger, uh-huh. you ought to focus on God. Yeah. Amen. Because if you focus on your problems, uh-huh. amen, all you're doing, amen, you keep thinking about them, all you're doing is making them larger. That's right. <laughs> That's right. And you wonder why your pressure up and your pill don't work. Mm. Huh? Somebody ought to holler back at me. Amen. All right, all right. amen. Amen. If you always focus on the money you have, or the money you need. <laughs> amen. Or the money you want. Amen. And so you like Snoop Dogg. Amen. Got your mind on your money. And your money on your mind. Yeah, and then yeah. you be like Snoop Dogg. Laid back. <laughs> Somebody know what I'm talking about. Amen. Because whatever you focus on becomes larger. Yeah, amen. Yeah. Or the success you're having. Or the success you're striving toward. Whatever you focus on and you're reveling in that success. Whatever it is you focus on becomes larger. It becomes bigger. And so the psalmist is saying unto us, amen, focus on God. There's never a time to be quiet. Focus on God. God is a great God. God is an awesome God. God is tremendous and powerful. Focus on God. God is glorious and magnificent. Focus on God. And then that's why the psalmist, amen, and I believe it's in 18, says the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows his handiwork because God a man is a craftsman. God is an artist. God is a scientist. God yeah. is all that. Yeah. A bag of chips. Yeah. French dip. Yeah. Celery carrots on the side. Yeah. Amen. And a guy talking all that. Yeah. Focus on God. 
God. Yes, sir. Magnify. Yes, yes. He said, if you focus on God, mm -hmm. amen, magnify God, mm. huh? then everything in comparison, problems and troubles and money, mm. yeah. success and sickness, mm. everything in comparison to God mm -hmm. is minuscule, yeah. minimum. Yeah, yeah. Or minimize. Yes, Somebody sir. ought to hear what I'm trying to say. Yes, Comparing to God? To God. Nothing compares to God, yeah. but it's a matter of focus. Yes, yes. So he says to the community, and watch this, watch this, I'm almost through. And this goes back to him faking it till he makes it. Mm -hmm. Because when he left Gath, where Kish was, after he faked, he was mad. Mm. So much he was faking it, so much that he was mad, he had saliva running all down his beard. Mm. And Akish said, get him out of here, get him out of my presence. Mm. And he left and he went to a cave in Adullam, which is about two miles from where he had defeated the giant Goliath. All right, all right. And I wish I had time to read it today in 1 Samuel chapter 21, pick up at verse 10 and go into chapter 22. And you'll see that all these men and it gave an interesting description of the men. They were broke, busted, and disgusted. Mm, mm. They were to the have nothings. Mm. Amen. To want somethings. Yeah, yeah. Amen. And they came to David, and they were there in a cave. Mm -hmm. And it is there where it is believed that David wrote and performed this song. All right, all right. And what David was saying to him, Amen. I'm running for my life. Mm. Amen. You run in the fine life. Mm. But it's never a time to be quiet. <laughs> Just magnify the Lord. And watch this. Not only that, let's focus on God. That's the magnify. But let's also exalt his name together. Yeah. And I can just, I can just see those. They numbered them some 400 men. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting when they excavated the caves. Amen. They, they excavated the cave. They said that they had sides that could fit two to three hundred. Mm. But they were jam-packed in there. Yeah. And David wrote, composed, and then performed this song. Four hundred men. Mm. There, and David said, magnify the Lord with me. Yeah. They start packing the place. Packing them in. Let us exalt his name together. Yeah. Packing them in. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I can imagine they said, how great is our God. Yeah. Sing with me how great yeah. is our God. Yeah, yeah. The world will see how great, yeah. how great yeah. is our God. Yeah. Name above all names. Yeah. Worthy of all praise. Yes, My heart will sing how great, how great, how great, how great. is our God. Yeah. Have I got a witness here? Yes, how great yes. is our God? Yes. Sing with me how great uh -huh. is our God. Oh, yeah. World will see how great. How great? How great, uh -huh. how great yes. is our God. Yes, sir. And that's what it means to exalt. Uh -huh. Amen. We magnify and then we exalt. We lift his name up high. Yes. Lift his name up high. Above every name. His name is wonderful. Yes. Counselor. Uh -huh. Mighty God. Yes. Everlasting Father. Yes. Prince of Peace. Yes. Yes. At the name of Jesus. Uh -huh. Every knee shall bow. Yes. Every time confess yes. that Jesus. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus. is Lord. Yes. He is Lord. He is Lord. Yes, sir. He's risen from the dead. Yes, and he is Lord. Yes. Out of breath. Yes. Out of strength. Uh -huh. And somebody said, Pastor Fisher, you out of time. Lord. But he is Lord. He's Lord. I wish I could put it right there. He is Lord. Yes. Risen from the dead. Yes, sir. And he is Lord. Mm. Hallelujah. I'm trying to get you to exalt and magnify with me. Hallelujah! Thine the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Oh, Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Thine the glory. Yeah. Revive us! Yeah. Revive us! Yeah. 
Let somebody pray with you and show you God's plan of salvation for your life. If no one is able to answer the phone, leave your name and number. We'll call you back. But let us pray for you and show you that God does have a plan for your life. If you are faking it until you can make it, I want you to know that today is your day. You have heard from the man of God and he's shown us a plan. He's shown us a way. The choice is yours. Will you give Jesus a chance? Give us a call. Area code 408 532 Rock. Or visit our website at www.churchontherockbaptist.com. Leave us a message and we'll get back to you. Well, it's offering time here at Church on the Rock. And we've made it so easy for you to be able to give to the various platforms on your iOS and Google Play phone. Our preferred app is uh, the Zelle Pay app. It's the easiest and it's free. But we also accept Cash app and PayPal. All you have to do is enter our telephone number, area code 408-532-7625. That's 408-532-7625. Rock. We're also on the Givelify app. Search for Church on the Rock Baptist. You'll see a picture of our sanctuary in the foreground. Follow the instructions and give that way. You may also visit our website, www.churchontherockbaptist.com. Uh, hit the giving button and follow the instructions there. And finally, you may mail your gift to Church on the Rock. Post Office Box 730341, San Jose, California, 95173. Whatever you choose to do for God through the ministry of Church on the Rock, we believe that God will never let you outgive Him. So as you generously give, believe God to answer your prayer. Believe God for that miracle. Believe God never to let you outgive Him, but to give it back to you in ways that you did not know yes. were possible. Yes. Well, until next time, same time, same place. Join us for Breakthrough with Church on the Rock. Until then, don't you give up. Don't you give in. Stay in the race, for we're all on the battlefield for the Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord.